read BBS, BBS, Black Bird Sugar, Bachelor's in Boxing Studies, Television, Fred Sanford of the Fistic Arts. So Terrence Bud Crawford does what Terrence Bud Crawford do. Before I get into that uh, special shout out to the uh, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, ring interest music. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody love me better. Makes me happy, makes me feel this way. Very good touch, bud. I saw he had his grandmama and his mama, whole family in the bubble with him. So, little, little homage to the old school R&B, mid 80s type shit. Like, respect, respect. But yeah, TKO4 of uh, Kale Brook. And really, it was a pretty good fight. First two rounds with Brooks on the strength of his jab. Uh, he was jabbing to the body. He jabbed to the body one or two good times, landed a few jabs to the head. He even hooked off the jab at the end of uh, one of the rounds. So, yeah, first two rounds was Brooks. At the end of the second round, Bud switched southpaw. And, uh, like, last 20, 30 seconds of round two, he switched southpaw. So it wasn't much of an effect in that round. Third round, either was Bud's round or even. It was either or. Either he was an even round or Bud's round. Uh, pretty much negated any and all jab action entirely from Kell Brook. And then uh, fourth round, you know, hit, hit him with a perfectly timed. Uh, I'm, I'm reading that people call it a right hook. No, it was actually a perfectly timed uh, southpaw jab. Like he was in the southpaw position, and as soon as Brook fired his right hand, Bud fired a southpaw jab, bow, and he couldn't fully extend it. So in the pictures that I posted at the beginning of this video, you see uh, Bud's elbow is bent, but no, it was not a hook. It's because he could not fully extend his, uh, his jab hand, his southpaw jab hand on the punch. And it was actually a counter shot, like I said. But uh, Brooke, from there, landed in his eye, nose area, fucked all that up. My man's nose was bleeding immediately. He staggered into the ropes. Fucking head was under the top rope, and he would have fell out. Had there not been ropes, he'd have fell into the fifth row. Like, that's how off balance he was. So the ref correctly ruled it a knockdown. Uh, action resumed, and Bud, if not the best finisher in the game, he's definitely one of them. And uh, <laughs> like he said on the uh, show, Relentless, Relentless, the interview with Ward, said, once I got you hurt, it's like I'm a lion and you a three-legged gazelle. And yeah, Kell Brook was definitely a three-legged gazelle and he was food for Bud Crawford. It was so bad, like afterwards, uh, Kell Brook was asking his, his corner, like what had happened? You know, what What started this? Like, he didn't see the shot coming, had no recollection of it. And it was what it was. Here's the thing with Kell Brook. You know, we don't want to make too much or too little of him. That said, he's great until he gets hit back. Like, <laughs> he's fantastic. If boxing was about one-way action, like, Kell Brook is fantastic. Triple G fight, he started out fast. He actually laid the blueprint that others have followed, other than the body shots. But he laid the blueprint of attacking Triple G, keeping him, you know, uh, shelled up and whatnot, getting your shots off. But once Triple G hit him back, it was a wrap. Earl Spence. Kell Brook started the fight well, probably had a slight lead after six rounds. Once EJ bit down, started hitting Kell Brook back. You know, in two fights, Kell Brook had both orbital bones fractured. Like, luckily there wasn't, uh, if he had three eyes, hell, Bud probably would have broke his third orbital bone. So, fortunately, man only got two eyes, so he couldn't get three orbital bones broken. But, yeah, he, he's fantastic until he gets hit, man. And that's, <laughs> as funny as it sounds, that's the missing ingredient over the course of his career is that very thing. When he gets hit back, Kell Brook... Uh, you know, he's not as good. On that note, like, imagine preparing for a fight with Terrence Crawford. Like, he, he's so versatile. 
Like, what what do you what do you exactly what are you training for? Like, do you there's it, it has to rack your brain. You have to train for so much because he he does so much. Like, there's so much to look for and be wary of just based on his sheer versatility. And what I love, he's not versatile just to be cute. Like, it's practical. It's not superficial at all, the way it should be. Bob Arum, you know, he's talking greasy about Earl Spence. I'm not going to dignify his comments with much of a response other than to say, let's not forget, tonight was the last fight of the current contract Bud Crawford has with Top Rank. That's why Bud, that's why uh, Bob Aaron was talking greasy like that. Don't think any more or less of that, for real. Bud said he wants Pacquiao next. I say, okay, the fight didn't happen when y'all was both on top rank. And real talk on some old man shit, I think Pacquiao would rather Spence and Crawford face each other, beat each other up first, unify three of the four belts, and then he'll fight whoever wins. I can't see him... I don't see the incentive for Pacquiao to want to fight Bud. And then you got two Spence. The Spence Danny winner has two. No. Manny wants them two motherfuckers to beat each other up. Then he'll fight the winner for the fourth belt. He'll bring the fourth belt and then we'll be unified. He ain't trying to go through that gauntlet like that. Hell no. So I don't see Pacquiao next. Uh, before I get out of here, please subscribe, like, comment. Remember sharing is caring. Love tap and or bitch slap that like button for your boy. But yeah, man, real talk. Uh, highest ring IQ, best boxing brain I've seen since Floyd Mayweather, Terrence Bud Crawford. No fucking doubt about it. Think back to Floyd versus uh, Corley when Floyd got hurt as bad as we've ever seen him in a fight. Think to uh, Floyd Zab Judah. You know, Zab caught him with that, that southpaw counter made Floyd touch down. Think of Shane Mosley versus Floyd. In all three instances, Floyd bit down like almost immediately. Almost immediately. He was faced with adversity. He adjusted. He adapted. And almost immediately, those fights were done. He didn't stop them, but he immediately assumed control and it was what it was. That's exactly what Bud Crawford does. Yeah, he has adversity. He gets hit with some shots. Maybe, maybe Mean Machine dropped him. Maybe he didn't. But after Mean Machine dropped in, what had happened? That's Bud Crawford. Same with Kell Brook. Yeah, you won the first two rounds clear as day, bro. You were out jabbing him. Soon as Bud switched southpaw, what had happened? Read BBS. BBS. Black Burt Sugar. <clears throat> Bachelors in Boxing Studies. Television. Fred Sanford of the Fistic Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do.